Sometimes the vast nature of the internet lets beautiful gems be buried beneath waves of nothingness, preventing them from reaching a wider audience who would otherwise be enthralled by their presence and content. Distant Chatter is certainly a demonstration of this, an analog surrealist piece by Polish YouTuber Krena Grzbał that is easily one of the greatest pieces of media I have seen on YouTube in quite some time. Since I only learned of this series a few weeks ago, despite it being over a year old now, I will assume that most of you have not had the chance to see it, so I'd like to start by inviting you to watch it. I'll have a link to the episode below. It's free, as all things are on YouTube, and only 30 minutes long. Trust me, it's worth your time. I should add that, for the course of this video, I will only focus on one aspect of this piece of art. Its complexities and nuances are far too much for me to break down in one video. Instead, I will focus on the aspects I believe I understand best. Finally, the very nature of this piece is confusing. While I may have theories, guesses, or hypotheses as to what it may mean, they could just as easily be wrong as they are right. So I invite you to consider what I say, watch the piece for yourself, and find truth from it on your own terms. With that intro done, I'd like to spend the rest of this video analyzing how indistant chatter raises a criticism of the perversions of consumerist culture throughout its runtime. <laughs> The art of indistant chatter is a waltz that dances us through 30 minutes of oddities. To try and summarize it would not only be a disservice to the show, but also likely riddled with inaccuracies and assumptions. I would not waste the entirety of this video just to get a foothold. So rather than make heads or tails of the show in its entirety, let's focus on the parts in the order by which they make the most sense in their own individuality, and use them to find some sort of meaning. Kind of like we're digging around the depths of a dark pool. To start, we can jump to 8.30. At this point, our young main character, Duper, watches an advertisement for a product called Bram 4. This advertisement features two characters, Procus and Bungie, who talk about the necessity of their product, Bramble Boar. Duper eventually calls in, trying to talk about things that were confusing him earlier in the night, only to be interrupted by Bungie who convinces him that what he actually needs is a pack of Bramble Boar for his parents on Christmas. Duper has real questions and concerns haunting him. Yet despite this, the nature of this society is to obscure them and focus on the consumer's goal of selling things to put a shiny coat of paint on a rusted car. Duper then states he has no money nor skills to trade for such a deal, something which confuses the two advertisements who state, well, everyone sells something. This should be seen as the simplest kind of dip into this pool of consumerist ideals that exist in the world of indistant chatter. In this world, everyone has something to sell, something to convince others they must have. Bramble Boar is a product which they argue nothing about what it actually is, nor what its benefits are. It is simply something you must have, and any parent or child will do anything to get their hands on it. To need without knowing why you need is a tenet of consumerism that has clearly enveloped the world of indistant chatter. Our descent into this pool of consumerism continues at 1702, where a literal mascot arrives in Duper's room. Duper accepts their arrival, despite the absurd nature of their appearance and statements, saying they have to go number seven. After the mascot uses the bathroom, it talks to Duper about the necessity of accessorization, saying everything does it and that it is key to what makes things great. When asked about her own accessories, she proclaims she has so many, but keeps losing them. And when she presents one, she has no idea what it does, or what it even is, saying, I don't know, when asked. She is in many ways the mouthpiece for the societal ideal. She is nonsensical, weird, and wrong, yet accepted. When asked for wisdom, she declares that everyone must have these accessories, despite them being useless. They're somehow essential to the society. You must have these things that do nothing and help you in no way, but you must have them because everyone has them. In this very scene, we see another example demonstrated by the poster that speaks to Duper, an echoing advertisement of an actress. 
a further spokesperson of this system engulfed by materialistic necessities, someone whom young Duper consults for guidance, despite her being yet another paper-thin mascot. The byproduct of this indoctrination of once, that must be needs, is a youth that is lost and confused. Demonstrating in the opening marks of the show, we can directly see the results of the messaging of this consumerist world has had on Duper. When Duper accidentally falls into an advertisement for a window, he questions not the world he is in, nor does he question the strange being before him. Instead, he names it Simon, changes himself to match it, and ultimately accepts it so much that he offers his finger to the beast. Consumerism has sold the child a world of silver and gold, but accepting the odd is normal, so the child saw no problem in giving up a literal part of himself to this being hidden in the corporate messaging. Materialism and consumerism both thrive on the surface level, when accepting what you are told and abandoning it in any pursuit of depth or knowledge. Beyond the perfections of presentation, there is naught but a tasteless creation. I think this is partially reflected in the continued journey of the two Bramble Boy advertisement characters. After Duper hangs up, Bonky decides to head home for Christmas, trying to brave the cold winter snow, only to find its expanse never-ending. In his world of consumerism, there is no family, no reality, no happiness. Just Bramble Boar and its corporate messaging that says it is necessary. Consumerism's consumption of family ideals is also taken quite literally. At 2323, we see a father figure who, dreaming about a cow, is literally consumed by the wife in the show, and action reacted to with thunderous applause and cheering. While this family is just a pair of robots, as shown by the electronic underparts of the father exposed by this consumption, having the father be eaten just because he dreams of the cow is a clear demonstration of the final mark of this analysis, and perhaps the biggest unifying point of the entire plot, the cow. The cow is mentioned throughout the episode, as various characters inquiry whether or not you have seen a cow. It is what the father dreams of before being consumed. It is the name of the episode itself and is perhaps the most direct demonstration of the conflict at play here. Cows are, by their very entrance, simple creatures, happy to graze upon grass and trot about. They are natural, in the void of the synthetic faux pas of consumer society. Yet they are happy, content to live free from the shackles of the silver screen. To see the cow is to see nature, to see a world outside the box the society has created. To allow yourself to be truly happy in a world that thrives on presentation. The cow cares not how it looks, nor what it owns, how others view it, nor how it views itself, yet the cow is happy. So to see the cow, as the father did, as we did, or as the voices inquire if we did, is to see the most deadly of sins to consumer society, to see the way out, to find happiness. Ultimately, the episode closes with the cow being unobserved father is punished for his transgressions with his figurement, and the child ignores the disorder, resulting in a byproduct that, to be honest, I don't fully understand. To be frank, the final minutes of the episode are really weird. Beyond even, like, I, I have no clue what's going on there. <laughs> but perhaps hope is not lost for the characters of Indistant Chatter. While this may only be the first episode, we do see a slight true glimmer in the pile of fake stars the show presents to us, and that is with the two main advertisements. After being unable to return home, Bunky returns to his co-worker, whom he finds eating a can of Bramble Boar. Bunky inquires if the company would approve, demonstrating the hold the corporations have over him, but ultimately folds, finding an odd sort of companionship on the holiday with Procus. While his family may not be real, and while the cow may not be observed, and the effects of consumerism may have consumed his reality, at the bare minimum, he can start to find the glimmer of happiness in his life. And perhaps that's the start of a greater story. But to be honest, we don't know. This is only the first episode, and considering it took several years to make, we likely won't know the full story for quite some time. But the best thing we can do now is spread the word. Let others find this beautiful creation, so the artists behind it feel empowered to continue creating more. But that's all for me from this time. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you also get around to watching In Distant Shadow and enjoying it as well. I truly love the series, and I thought it was a necessity of me to kind of cover it, at least to help some more people find this gem of a creation. But until next time, this has been Christopher Beast. Ciao.